So let's hit our final bullet point here. Let's get it done quickly. Um, so I just want to ask everyone around the table, I guess I'll start, um, about what seems to be the new and unfortunate reality is that Biden may be the next president of the United States. And what does, what does that mean for us as people? So a lot of it is contingent on the Senate. If there is a tie in the Senate, that means the vice president breaks the tie, which would be Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. which would be horrifying. So we need at least a 51 majority. And right now it looks like we will get it. But we will have lost, we're at a net loss of one seat right now. The Democrats are up one seat in the Senate. So let's just say worst case scenario, Democrats take the Senate by a tie or a 51-49 margin. This means the Biden agenda is passed in two years without a hitch. $15 an hour minimum wage. Um, some version of the Green New Deal defunding of the police, etc. What does life look like for us? So my opinion on the outset is I'm going to approach it optimistically because when Obama was president, we, we thought, no, he's not going to be a great president, but we're going to survive this. I think the next at least four years are not going to be as good as they were under Trump. Also a national mask mandate. But I do think we're going to get through it. It's not going to be the end of the world. And, well, technically it will be the end of the world because we're slowly moving toward that direction. And that's what kind of the topic is of this podcast is our eventual descent into hell itself. But... That sounds like the, the channel Markiplier is going on. Unis on us. I don't know if you uh, got right. that. Right. Decided to For now... TikTok and die. Yeah. 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 Sorry. For now, though, we are still okay. Um, eventually, there will probably be a civil war and the destruction of America, but for now, we're still okay. Um, Gabe, how about you go first this time? What's your thoughts on that, big boy? Sure, sure. Um, I, I like your optimistic approach. I think um, uh, if I had to guess um, uh, what we think of inner cities, um, and that kind of culture and what that looks like is going to uh, be closer to what everywhere looks like by the end of, of these four years um, as, as the same kinds of things that happen there because of uh, the culture and, and the leniency of the laws um, bleeds into everything else. Um, a, a lot of people will go as far as to say, oh, America is going to end up as a third world country. And that's, that's not the case, um, I, don't, I don't think. But I think likening um, our prospects to more of an inner city kind of um, kind of survival mentality is what you're going to have to keep um, or more so than usual might be a better likening um, but like like you said it's it's not like um, um, it's not like Biden is going to activate Skynet and going to bomb us all <laughs> like, as far as we know that's not going to happen <laughs> Mr. Colin? Well, I think one thing, um, the one that sticks out to me is the, the new form of the Green New Deal. Um, and here's why. So I, ever since I was little, have always loved cars, right? Always liked driving fast, doing illegal things on streets, right? Alleged. Yes. Allegedly, allegedly doing. Yeah. Um, and so... With the Green New Deal, we lose NASCAR. They're going to basically ban NASCAR because they have to use electric cars because what? they have so much emissions and That's stuff. That's lame. Yeah. So no more NASCAR. Formula One's pretty much toast, right, in the U.S. And the thousands of drag strips and race circuits are also going to to lose their ability to operate and so nascar is valued at right about seven billion dollars so that's a seven billion dollar you know i mean it's not as big as nba because that's like two franchises in the nba but you lose the seven billion dollar market 
almost instantaneously. And so that poses, that'll either bring in a new market of all these electric vehicles, which could be a good thing. I mean, I, I don't think any of us would complain about electric vehicles because I don't know about you guys if you've had the ability to drive a Tesla before, but I mean, you you punch it and I mean, you go. I mean, it's instant, instantly <laughs> fast. But it could also bring us into the point where you lose all these auto shops that are, you know, old auto shops that are do like carburetors and stuff like that. You also basically lose all of the classic cars that you see in movies because they're no longer legal to drive because they create too much pollution because the cars back then didn't really have the emission standards that they do now. Um, so it's going to be a huge deal when it comes down to the auto industry in general. So I think that's something that we'll have to look out for if Biden is elected. How long can we actually still drive a normal car? But that's Good what point I got there, for you. It will definitely be a different series of years. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, the message of hope is that, you know, this is part of the reason why it's so good to be a Christian, because at the end of the day, who I am isn't affected by Trump or Biden or even the Wicked Witch of the West herself, Kamala Harris. You know, The reality is I'm still saved. I still know who I am and nothing can change that. Greetings, viewer. Ah! If you liked that video, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? so that you can watch more. <laughs> I dropped my phone. <laughs>